Alan and Joe, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. What about you, Frankie? I'm good. Andrew? Yes, I'm done. I just finished. So, and, like, is this another paragraph thingy? Yeah, this is another paragraph. Is our Brian, are you done? Yes. Okay, we are moving on. Wait, is a system. And this system is in triangular form because you can see every every leading coefficient. So you can see every leading coefficient is one. So if there's nothing here, so it's just X, right? So it means one. And the subscripts are increasing from left to right. So you have subscript one here and then three, four. So it's sorted least to greatest in the subscripts. So two, three, four, five, six, five, six. Okay. So here we have the X row, the Y row, and the Z row. I should space them purple. Okay, so you got the matrix like this. So since this coefficient is two for E1, oh, by the way, E1, I can write it. Since Coefficient is two on the first uh, on for x on e one you write two for x and since three uh, y is three you write three for y and since since uh, z is just this is just minus z minus z by the way y minus z uh it's just minus z that means z coefficient is just negative one and for the uh he's just here to listen and since uh we have an equal sign we uh, represent the equal sign with a vertical bar like this this will be one over here for the constant, let's call it constant C, and yeah, close the matrix. And then for E2, you can see we have 10x, so 10 as our first number. And you can see that Y doesn't is not present in here, so we put zero for Y. And for Z, again, it's, also negative uh, minus z, so we put negative one as the coefficient. And since it's equal to two, we put two as the constant. And for e3, four, nine, and two, then Wait, five. So the constant is five, right? Yeah, the constant is five, but it's okay. equal to. So, Row, uh, next we have the row operations. Uh, oh, by the way, I should, are you guys done? Or? Um, the constant is 8, 4, and 10. For sp eight, um. 4, and 10. Very good so far. What about, then, uh, uh, for, yeah. uh, the third thingy, like, the third part of the first equation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 3, for x, is 3. Three. For y, it's zero. Uh, y exists in this one. Negative one. Oh yeah, negative one. Zero. I think very it's good. good. It's very good. Negative one. Zero. Um, z is also present. So unless z doesn't exist, which it does, uh, we have to write non-zero. Wait, then what? One. One. Very good. Wait, then what? Zero. Zero, it's like, no, like zero would be like, for example, you were trying to encode 3x plus z. Y does not, like, there's no y in this, so y would be zero. Oh. Yeah, it makes sense. 
Okay, so what about the next row? Uh, how about uh, zero? It's zero. One. How about Alan? One. 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 Good. Very good, Alan. Two. Two. And negative one. Very good. Uh, very good, very good. What about this is, yeah. Negative one. Okay. What about the last row? How about Andrew and Brian? You two do this one. Uh, two, three, negative four. Good job. That is correct. We have successfully encoded this into a matrix. What, sh what do we need to do to this matrix? Remember the row operations? You can like operate on the rows of the matrix. How would we get this to one? We can swap any rows. I'll do the first one for you. So, what we do is we swap, oh, by the way, I'm gonna write, this is row one, remember row one, row two, row three. So we swap row two with row one because row two already has a one as its first entry. So swap R2 with R1. Okay, so we have Now we switch the rows around. So now like this. So one, two, negative one, four. Then row, what was previously row one is now row two. So you can see everything's identical. Eight. 10 and then uh, we didn't touch row three yet. So that's still the same. So I'll just write it. Correct. So this is the first row. What we can do is we multiply the second, but we multiply the first row. So negative three times R1. So negative three times R1, that means this one becomes negative three, right? So once we have that one, negative three, we can add the negative three onto this three and it becomes zero. So we do negative three R1 plus R2 and this becomes zero negative three, so this becomes this becomes negative six. And when we add it onto the existing negative one, we get negative seven over here. Then negative one, this becomes, this becomes just three because negative three times negative one is three. When we add it onto the already existing one over here, we get four. Then for the bottom row, uh, we do for this row. Hold on, let me. Yep, and then for the bottom row. Wait, is like we... R the, like the. R is row. R means row. R stands for row. So R1 is row one. R2 is row two. And what we can do now is we can, um, we can replace the third equation. You can see. We have a two here, but we want it to be, we have a two here, but we want it to be zero. So what we can do is we can replace R3. Again, we can do the same thing. Once you have a one as your first entry, it becomes much easier. We can do, we can do negative two R1 plus R3. So that means negative, two, uh, negative two times R1, one times negative two, this, this becomes negative two, right? That means we get negative two here. We can add it to this two, negative two plus two equals zero. So we get zero here. Uh, we can also then after that, negative two R1 again. So Wait, negative- Oh, never mind. Yeah. Negative two here, 
this uh, becomes negative two times neg negative two times two. This is negative four. When we add, uh, when we add negative four to three to the existing three here, this becomes negative one. And then for the z, we get negative two times negative one. That is two. Ne negative times negative is positive. So two. When we add it, when we add two to negative four, we get negative two as the answer. And for the uh, 